Good morning YouTube and welcome to day two of the Land Rover Discovery T, uh, 2 TD5 rear chassis extravaganza. Right, yesterday I got as far as removing the fuel tank which uh, now means now means I can look on the inside of the chassis rails. Now I haven't actually looked myself. I didn't look yesterday. I thought I'd save that for today. So you as well as I are now journeying into the unknown. Now to do this, to find out just how bad the rails are, you need two specialist tools. You need a paint scraper for removing any blacking or loose metally rusty stuff that happens to be on there and a hammer this is my trusty thingy which is good for giving the chassis a good old tap if it's in good condition then it won't do anything um, but any rust or any really dodgy areas it will just fall straight through so oh wasp Anyone else notice there seems to be a lot of wasps about this year in the UK? Used to hate them. I used to run a mile, but uh, I seem to have got over that. Anyway, here goes. Let's have a look. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, this side. Oh my God! Look at it up there. Hopefully, that is just loose stuff up there because oh god look at it because the repair section only goes to about here so let's have a let's have a little look around here eh I think I'll get straight in with the hammer on this bit oh my god bearing in mind this has a reasonably fresh MOT on it which was done in July of 2016. Well I've seen enough there. This is the other repair section that they put in or the garage doing the work for them put in. So this just looks like well, it's paint the old paint that's peeling off really that's, uh, that's the other half of the bolt which holds the back strap on for the fuel tank right, this top bit I don't want this to be dodgy yeah, there's the boot. Right. Watch the fuel lines. Phew, fortunately. This looks like it might be alright. I'll just swap hands. Use the other hand. Or I have two of them. And if I had an hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, I'd hammer all the time. Right, well, fortunately, this looks fairly good. Just a load of loose surface car car. Car car. Well, this seems okay, thank heavens. 
thank whoever. This seems pretty good. Ooh, that's a relief. But that bit, yeah, I mean, that's just totally shot. Once I cut it off, I can have a good old look at it then. Uh, there's no way on earth. I mean, I'm no vehicle technician. There's no way on earth this should have passed an MOT. So today, I shall be going along the chassis and wire brushing, getting rid of all the loose stuff and painting it with Hamrite Smooth, which I've always used and is extremely good at stopping rust dead. Right, let's have a look at the other side. Oh my word. Right, well this side has... Uh, actually bulged by the look of it, it's deformed. I don't know if you can see that. Bear in mind this is expected to tow trailers, you know, horse box, that kind of thing, which we did mention to Mr. Ian Walker at Bolton Van Sells and his son, um, that uh, we were gonna be doing towing. Right, there it goes. Unfortunately, I think we've got it in time. Oh, just loose paint up there. That's the remains of paint from the factory. No wonder these things don't last very well. The paint is ridiculous. I mean, actually the stickers lasted better than the paint. Nice big hole in there. Look at that. Now, when I spoke to Ian Hunter at Bolton Van Sales, I like saying that, um, during my uh, fairly brief phone conversation with him, um, I explained to him you know, what I'd been able to see at the time. And he said, well, I should have known that before I bought it. But he's, he's completely forgotten that he, as the seller, is responsible for selling it in a roadworthy condition, which this is not. If this went for an MOT now, obviously, apart from the fact it's missing components, it would fail. Um, he, he said, um, he said uh, it's nothing to do with him. Uh, I should take it up with the garage that did the MOT. I thought, you want me to take it up with the garage that did the MOT for you? Very good. Um, so I said I'd be taking the matter. I said I'd uh, I'd be notifying Vossa. He said Vossa's nothing to do with him, even though they, they govern the running of, amongst many things, the used car selling business for for um, business sellers, not private sellers, and he's a business. Um, and he said Voss has got nothing to do with them, and that's when he hung up. Um, so, yeah, there's absolutely no way on earth this sh I would tow, especially uh, the horses, with this. So it's a good job this is coming off. But like I say, it's only coming about as far as... Oh, right. It's only going about as far as there. Right, but I won't be uh, cutting it off just yet because I'm waiting for 
the uh, new rear section to arrive, which according to the tracking is on its way today. Um, so, yep, the new rear section is going to be cut along when I pointed out, and then it replaces this. It comes along pre-assembled, pre-welded, that section. I mean, you, it's easier, it costs more, but it's easier in the long run, I think, to replace the whole thing rather than, you can buy just individual rails and a cross member as well if you want, but um, you would have to, to do that side, you would have to cut it off there and you'd have to cut it as close as you can to the edge of this down there and the same the other side and weld it, no problem there and up in there, but there's no way you can weld over the top there, um, which obviously you want. So it's easy just to whip it off and change the whole thing, which includes these brackets here and the mountings on the back for the body. So until that arrives, I'm going to inspect the chassis forward, which I've been fairly thorough with, and it's mainly a case of surface stuff, like on that cross beam thing there. Um, which I'll scrape, take down to paint, you know, take down to um, to metal, rusty metal, and then I'll paint it with hammerite smooth, and then eventually I'll underseal the whole lot. So that's the next job. And I was just about to start scraping and painting the chassis when the new section turned up, and here it is. It's a very well made and very heavy lump of metal. Um, and this is three millimeters thick. Uh, a standard Discovery chassis is two millimeters. So this is gonna weigh more than that, especially that'll be a lot lighter because it's got loads of holes in it. Um, so this is going to weigh more than that. So I have been thinking about this probably for quite a, a few days really. When I, I, I've got to support the back of the body because even though there's a lot of rigidity in the body itself, I don't want to risk any slight dropping, distortion, the door won't shut properly, all that kind of stuff. So. I'll be supporting the rear of the body on each side with sort of wooden struts. Um, but the problem I have is when I cut off and remove the old section, the car's going to become slightly lighter. So it's actually going to lift slightly on the springs. You know, it might even just be sort of like five millimeters or something, which will cause the props to drop out and, you know, and so on defeats the object of it. So what I shall be doing, and I was thinking about this last night for ages, couldn't get to sleep, was I'll use a couple of ratchet straps on each side and ratchet down probably like an inch or so from between the chassis and the axle to compress the suspension slightly at the back, not a huge amount. Um, and then I can put my you know, I can have my wooden struts in there. Problem is, um, problem is that, excuse me, my wife is bringing her horse along and she seems to think I don't want horses on the video, but I'm not bothered. Right. Um, <laughs> right. The problem is that this weighs a lot more than the old one. So that when I come to fit the new one on, Hello, Lancer. No, it's not food. You can't eat it. When I put the new one on, because it weighs a lot more than the old one, then it's going to s squash the car down. So it'll sit slightly lower than it does at the moment. Okay, because you, know, you just give it a slight bit of thingy and it moves, see? So I, I need to then, I need to put a jack under each chassis rail at the back 
to stop the car from dropping. So I need to stop it from dropping slightly and I need to stop it from lifting slightly. So that when I take off the old one and put on the new one, there's no up and down movement and the struts remain in place and they do their job of holding the body where it needs to be. Which is going to take a while to set up. Um, so I need to think of an order in which to do things. These um, rear replacement sections are done in such a way, <coughs> well most of them are, um, the majority of them are done in this way which is the ends are flared out so that when you cut the chassis you actually cut the old chassis sort of here so the chassis is coming through and it finishes about here and then this slides over that bit. Um, you then you weld all the way around and you know whilst closing this up so it's a tight fit and you can also weld down these gaps on all four corners and the same on the other side. <clears throat> this piece of metal here is just superfluous this is actually to hold the to keep its shape when it's being made um, and once it's fitted you actually cut this thin bit of angle off. Um, so the first thing I'll be doing is taking some measurements I'm assuming or hoping that the tow hitch um, sort of like little brackets here for pull, you know for towing the car and pulling and so on I'm assuming they're in the same place as the original so I'll be taking measurements from the bumper mounting at the back to a point on this hitch thing here um, and also from the body mounting to that point um, so I'm going to start by taking various measurements and then I can measure from, assuming they're the same, I can measure from this sort of hitch area to a point here and then transfer that to the chassis which will give me a place to make the cut. Um, obviously checking 20 times and cutting only once because you can remove metal but it's very difficult to put it back on. So the first job is to take some measurements. Right, so after a bit of umming and ahhing, um, I've come to the conclusion that I should be cutting from the center of that bolt there, which is the center of the mounting, to that point there which is 500 millimeters or 50 centimeters um, there's the end of that hook and then 500 goes right by there and looking at the new one it's a vertical cut straight down like so which just misses the existing chassis number that's like laser etched into the thing. But obviously you won't be able to see it because the new part will be sliding over it. Not that I want to proudly display the chassis number. So it's gonna be 500 millimeters. From the center of the bolt to there. Because if you measure 500, I'm not as young as I used to be. Oh. If we measure the new component, which will sit up, hold it up with me leg, oh. which will sit up roughly. Oh. Behave yourself. Can you hear me? It's going to sit up roughly like that. If you see that, the bumper mountings, the front face of the bumper mountings are vertical. So if I hold this with those roughly vertical, stop tipping up, and I'll measure. And I measure from here, 500 millimeters. So the 500 is in the center of the thingy bobby there, to there, down the bottom, 
very difficult to do one-handed. That's basically right there. Same place on the other one, which is right where it starts to flare out. If you cut straight up, there's like a line there. You can probably just make out right there, which is where it flares out. So I'll do the first cut like that, and then I may have to either cut or grind a little bit on the end of the old one, of the existing chassis, and try it a piece at a time until it's on, and this, the centre of this lines up with the body mountings. So the first thing I'm going to do then is mark out on the chassis. So a thought just crossed my mind going on about um, strapping the car down and jacking it up and holding it steady and all this. Why bother doing all that? All I need to do if I'm worried about bouncing the springs and any stored energy and lightweight pushing the car up, why don't I just jack the car up a couple of inches on the chassis and stick it on axle stands? As you can see, it's gone up about an inch or inch and a half, something like that. So I've now taken a fair bit of the stored pressure in the spring so that when I remove the rear section, that difference will be taken up. So in theory, the car shouldn't rise at all. And it can't sink because it's on axle stand. And there you go, I'm quite, uh, quite chuffed with that. I've saved myself a whole lot of faff. And so I've marked out the chassis, which I'll show you on this side. Which hopefully you can see right by there. And I've done the same on the other side. So it is, in fact, ready for cutting. I've kept the bolts in both sides. Um, because what I want to avoid is cutting through it and then it just comes crashing down. So what I'm gonna do is cut down the side and at the top and then get round, round there and cut that side, but leave the bottom and I'll do the same the other side. So that once I've done both of those, I can then undo these bolts and pull, or maybe it'll even just go of its own accord, the, uh, the chassis section, so it's near the ground. And then I just have to cut along the bottom each side. And voila, hey presto, you mean flip? There you are. So the next job is to get cutting. But first of all, I need to find a plug <laughs> for my extra large disc cutter because I took that off to put on my new welder, which um, you'll see shortly. My new MIG welder, which you'll see later on or in the next video. So there we go. Well, isn't it just typical? You get everything set up, ready to go. The chassis is marked, sort of there. Yeah. Um, props in place. Jack the car up slightly. Put it on axle stands on the under the chassis. My giant um, disc cutter is ready to rumble. And now it's raining. Still, it's like nearly five o'clock. And even though my videos are like 20, 30 minutes long, um, there's like hours often in between. Yeah. <laughs> that was the wife asking me if I'm doing another video. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> right. Oh, just see the headlights of the old van there. Mm. Yeah, I worked through some weather with that one. Freezing cold, snow, rain, wind, and sunshine as well. 
but that van's given me lots and lots of fun and excitement. Right, so it's all ready to cut off. That'll be the job first thing in the morning. And that's where I will begin tomorrow. I will see you then. Unless, of course, it's hammering it down. So, for now.